Okay, welcome everybody. So we are pleased to have you here. So uh, our talk is called CIP Install Sustainable Software Stacks in Long Living Products. CIP stands for Civil Infrastructure Platform. And in this talk, you will learn what this is, what the purpose of this is, who's contributing, how you can contribute. And first of all, let us introduce ourselves. So maybe, Yoshi, you start. Hi, um, I'm Yoshi from uh, Toshiba and also uh, CIP. And I'm, work I'm working at the CIP as a technical steering committee chair and uh, to discussing uh, more technical directions about that. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Joshi. We are doing this talk together. So I'm first uh, line with uh, Siemens. And um, we are just about to get started now. So uh, civil infrastructure and industry trends. So what is coming and what is upcoming? And surprise, uh, it's a lot about Internet of Things, IoT. And you all see, or we we all see around us a lot of devices get connected, like cars, for example, not just uploading data, but also uploading or exchanging information with servers in order to enable new business, business models and uh, like, like car sharing uh, apps and things like that. But also in industry and in the city area, there are a lot of systems which get connected at the moment to enable also, we yeah, are just gathering data to do predictive maintenance, to do better quality inspection, uh, optimizations regarding production and so on. And uh, the same is true for, for smart cities. So there are a lot of hidden systems in the city which get connected to gather data about power consumption and even and, 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 and traffic flow and so on. And even get more and more connected to each other and uh, data is matched uh, energy consumption weather forecasts and everything and uh, but the special thing compared to maybe these typical devices we all know uh, is that there are still these old systems behind ensuring the normal operation of, of the whole infrastructure, like uh, controlling the trains on the rails, uh, like uh, also smaller systems like ticket gates, all the hundreds of systems uh, managing power grids, for example, or in the power plants, controlling turbines and similar devices, and many more. So building automation is controlling light, uh, there are fire safety products, uh, there is all this telecommunication equipment which uh, which helps us to also do these broadcasts here um, uh, which is is running in the background and we, we highly rely on the systems not to focus about healthcare and I already mentioned it also to industry so this is a smaller domain or not affecting everybody uh, but there are a lot of automation systems uh, helping to run the production and at the precision we need it and at the efficiency we, we, we need it. And when talking about IoT, the question is um, what's so special about all these systems and why does it need, why do we have the need for a project uh, created uh, in this area? So if you look at classical consumer IoT devices, so uh, it looks basically like, like this. You have light bulbs or other devices, TVs connected to a central server. And uh, if you look, if you compare this to, to systems installed in infrastructure systems and in industry, yeah, you see this immediately. It, it's, it's much more complicated. Uh, there are more systems involved interacting with each other. And we have what we call these industrial grade uh, requirements like uh, robustness, 24-7 operation, and uh, uh, even operation if certain things do not work, like the, the connection to the cloud, for example. So if you, if you use your smartphone or 
it, it does not it matter too much, so it's maybe annoying, but uh, it does not uh, affect anybody else. In the in the writer case, uh, what, what we have is uh, we really uh, have to ensure that all these systems I mentioned are constantly working. And also another topic is the bottom line, guaranteed latency, throughput, and responsiveness. That's because of these systems are interacting with the physical world, so you really are interacting with physical processes, with real traffic, and so on. So um, we uh, really have to guarantee times here. We are talking about real-time systems, and uh, this in total is what we call industrial-grade systems. In addition to this, um, one other Speciality, if you want, of these systems is that they live quite long. So, uh, if, if you look at some control systems, they look somehow like what you see on that slide. So, they are really old, and that also means the systems we build today will stay there for a while. And we somehow have to, to ensure that uh, the system can work such such a long, long time. And uh, all this together. We are living in a connected world that opens up much more um, possibilities of, of, of cyber attacks. So uh, security is also the big question, how to ensure this. And um, we really have a lot of devices. And uh, at the moment, we have a lot of uh, devices which are um, yeah have different uh, we had to have different uh, computer or software architectures uh, uh, in. Okay. okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so this summarizes basically what are the challenges. Um, so we talked about industrial grade systems, reliability, sometimes functional safety. Uh, and uh, real-time ca capabilities. And um, then we have to build sustainable software stacks. So systems are living for, for decades, not for years. We have to ensure backwards compatibility. And um, I, I'm just getting the message that, that the audio is quite bad. So maybe we will try to to switch to the phone, just a second. Oh, sorry. Um, this is uh, when we're talking. Uh, the audio is not uh, working well, so we need to switch uh, from uh, PC to phone. So please wait a moment. Sorry about that. So, um, okay. So it should be better now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you very much for waiting. Oh, okay. So this slide summarizes what I was talking about. So uh, our systems, which are uh, part of civil infrastructure, which are part of industry, have to be industrial grade in the sense that they have to be reliable. Sometimes we have functional safety requirements. Um, they very often need to fulfill real-time capabilities. These systems live for a long time, like uh, decades, not years. Uh, we have a need a strategy how to exchange things, so this backwards compatibility. And uh, security-wise, uh, yes, we have also to consider how do we ensure security over the years. That means uh, security vulnerability management. This means uh, we need a robust software update concept. And uh, of course, behind that, we have to ensure that there are no regressions uh, in the system. 
And how do we solve these challenges? So uh, systems become com more complex. And uh, one thing is uh, that uh, a development which we see on this slide, uh, which is true for, for the whole IT world, uh, that we build more and more and so -called, on so-called commodity components, which are open source mostly, and this proprietary differentiating part gets uh, percentage-wise smaller and smaller uh, in those systems. And uh, that's why we also said, why don't we also team up for these domains? So for people who build systems which which have a long lifetime and have these industrial requirements and um, then start to uh, start to to develop a strategy on this and not only a strategy but also really developing uh, software will come to this so uh, one part of this is um, that uh, at the moment, uh, we noticed, or a couple of years ago, we noticed that we even in these big companies like Toshiba, Hitachi, Siemens, uh, and, and others, we have a lot of different software stacks around which all have to be maintained. And uh, so there was a strong demand for a harmonization to agree on starting with the Linux kernel to, to agree on the same kernel, to agree on the same packages used, the same sources, the same infrastructure, and so forth. Uh, that's why we created this project, which is called Civil Infrastructure Platform. And uh, this basically consists uh, of parts, which are the foundation for an industrial Linux distribution. So, and since we started small and uh, had, a, had a few partners, we started with the kernel, which was the most pressing demand at that time, and said, okay, let's team up for the kernel and extend the existing long-term support initiatives uh, up to 10 years, maybe more, but that's something we, we, we thought we could commit on. And then, and this is happening now, extend this uh, by the packages which everybody needs. So for very small systems, where you can be pretty sure that this is in. And um, so uh, we are continuously extending, <coughs> extending this story. So how does, is this used then in a company? So um, we, we take the lower parts out of this project, out of the civil infrastructure, and then uh, we have a layered approach and uh, put domain-specific extensions on, on top. Most of them are then coming from, uh, from, uh, yeah, from the Debian releases in this case, uh, so they are not part in the upper areas of, of the CIP project. So the maintenance and the development of these packages is then in the responsibility of the respective uh, units of the companies. Uh, but at least we have a common base and we are continuously extending this. And uh, yeah, the next slide basically shows uh, the same. So we of course use what is there in terms of long-term support. So the Debian long-term support and extended long-term support programs. And uh, this together then results in an sustainable, maintainable way of uh, or, or base for, for distributions. And a lot of people were asking us, why are you doing this? Why are you not just jumping to the next, uh, to the latest kernel version? The reason is uh, that there are a lot of restrictions behind <coughs> their certification, for example, and uh, switching the operating system, so switching the kernel and packages above to a newer version would mean in this, these systems running the complete test process uh, up to the system test, doing the certification again. And uh, this is really a lot of work which, uh, is, uh, which we try to avoid. So uh, in many cases, it's easier to backport security patches, for example, it's less work, and if, if we share this work, like we do in this program, uh, it's, uh, it's even less compared to uh, doing this alone. 
So the setup of the project is uh, the setup of the project is, is like this. So how does this work? We have several companies. So this is Renesas, Siemens, Toshiba, uh, CodeSync, Cybertrust, Hitachi, Moxa, and Platome at the moment who teamed up. And these companies provide two things, basically. So this is uh, their own people. This is developers and maintainers uh, on one side. And this is budget on, on the other side. And uh, there is an error between budget and developers. This should mean that we can extend our team of developers and maintainers by using some of the budget uh, to, to hire additional people uh, from the kernel community or from different projects uh, or just people who are good at what they are doing. And uh, so we have a common budget. We do a cost sharing on the things which we want to drive. This is developers. And there's an error down. Uh, this means we are also funding projects which are important for us. Like uh, if we have requirements uh, which we wanted to place uh, in Debian packages or uh, in uh, we want to push also some real-time Linux efforts, we are also funding certain tasks in these uh, respective projects. And uh, the policy or the strategy here always is we, we don't want to create something on our own. So the policy is upstream first. So we are uh, always working together with the upstream projects. We are using whatever is there. And we, we are trying to push back all the changes we need uh, to, uh, to, to the upstream projects. So with this, I would like then to switch over to Yoshi, who goes a little bit into the detail of, of the, the actual work of the project and the progress uh, of the last year. All right. Thank you very much, Urs. So uh, from now on, uh, I'll directly talking about the uh, current uh, latest status update for CIP project. So CIP is uh, yeah, launched uh, to solve our uh, key issues, uh, since like uh, stable, Linux, stable Linux and also reliable Linux and so on. So we currently uh, have uh, lots of issues. Um, as you can see in this slide, uh, there are lots of bugs, but uh, some of them is only cloud. So we currently focusing on the six activities, and this uh, first one is a super long-term support. Then uh, we expand our activity to real-time and uh, testing and so on. So the reason why uh, we uh, expand our activity step-by-step uh, step is uh, we prioritize uh, for each uh, technical topics. Uh, from the request of our uh, customer requirements and also our actual requirements for civil infrastructure. So, yeah. So uh, this is a CIP governing structure and the project uh, mapping. So each project focusing on the uh, scopes for CIP uh, kind of works on. So every uh, CIP activities relates on to ensure uh, industrial grade for uh, civil infrastructure and critical infrastructure systems. And uh, some of them are focusing on the sustainability, for example, uh, CIP core and things um, test a lot on the CIP kernel and CIP core itself uh, to expect its uh, stability for the uh, infrastructure systems. So this kind of works on the, uh, on our technical steering committee and also each working groups working on the specific topics to ensure its goals. So as we said, uh, we have a strong uh, upstream path policy. So CIP, you know, as you can see in CIP project, uh, they, are, they also have uh, many projects already running to solve their uh, goals. 
for example, uh, CIP needs to real-time feature uh, to use uh, Linux in the uh, industrial controlling systems. But a um, uh, real-time Linux project has already exist. So that means a uh, real-time Linux project is upstream for us. Uh, CIP tried to contribute this kind of upstream project first to, uh, to involve its uh, goals. And then I uh, use the upstream code results in the civil infrastructure platform project to, mani uh, to manipulate and to configure uh, for our use cases. And that is the result of CIP open source space area. So um, in the left side corner, uh, there are many contributed projects by CIP. But we also have other uh, interest projects like uh, software data or uh, real time hypervisor or something like that. So, this kind of innovative project currently are uh, considering uh, to use by CIP members for the future candidates in the CIP base layer. So, this is the structure how we work with upstream community and also to create open source base layer. So this circle is most important for us to create our open source space layer for industrial systems. So let me describe more details for the each working groups from now on. So this slide shows a CIP super long term support current development. So we have a CIP current team uh, in the CIP project. And uh, the project mentoring by Ben Hatchin, uh, he is also uh, working on uh, Debian kernel uh, mentor and also currently uh, works for the uh, yeah, stable releases. So he mentored our uh, maintainers, um, Nobuhiro and Pavel, um, so to work with stable community because our maintainer is an uh, experienced kernel developer, but uh, we also would like to have more experience from uh, experienced stable maintainers. So that's why uh, we have this structure, uh, mentor and maintainers. And under the mentor and maintainer, uh, we have a uh, yes, couple of developers to maintain and to review the CIP kernel and patches. So we work with upstream kernel. So our upstream is mainline also a uh, stable release. So currently uh, there are six stable releases when you uh, see the kernel.org site. And we picked up uh, two kernel versions for super long term support. So uh, first one is uh, version 4.19, uh, we currently uh, maintain the, the latest versions. And 4.4 is our first CIP super long-term support kernel. So to create CIP long-term support kernel, uh, we first um, pick up the uh, LTS kernel, then uh, we start uh, work with uh, long-term stable teams. So that means, uh, we also review the patches and uh, also uh, post the uh, review results to a uh, Linux uh, stable mailing list. So this is how we work uh, together with a uh, stable current team. And the next slide is so also current related topics. Uh, real time Linux kernel development is also uh, currently ongoing. Um, but um, unfortunately, a real time patch is not mainlined yet. So we would like to have the activities uh, to mainline our uh, main uh, real time Linux kernel uh, because uh, currently, a uh, real time kernel patch is separated with a uh, mainline kernel. So that means if we want to use a uh, stable kernel with real time feature, uh, we need to create a stable RT kernel. So that makes uh, twice 
uh, which means that we need to maintain stable kernel and stable RT kernel. So when uh, this uh, real-time Linux kernel uh, is masked, we also uh, directly contribute to the uh, yeah, stable, stable, uh, stable project. So that makes much uh, easier for not just only uh, Linux kernel users, but also our uh, use case. So this is uh, why uh, we direct to uh, contribute to the Delta Linux kernel project. And uh, after uh, we joined the Delta Linux project, uh, there are lots of progress done. So we are looking forward uh, to mainline the Delta Linux uh, kernel patches. So and this is a kernel version of so, uh, project DOL. So our first part kernel, uh, CID kernel is a 4.4, and that is uh, released uh, in 2017 November, uh, I don't know, November 2017 January. So this is our very first release, and it's about uh, three years for now. And the project is here 10 years when we are releasing. So yeah, so uh, that is uh, our our plan for the uh, color maintenance. And the uh, next version is COVID-19 that was released uh, one year one and a half years ago. And the uh, project in OS is uh, 2029. Um, so so um, maybe uh, some uh, thing is also direct to know uh, what is the next current version. So we currently planning to uh, check uh, pick up uh, next current versions because uh, our uh, expected for the current release is uh, nearly uh, two, uh, two to three years. So that means, uh, yeah, things we need to decide for the next one. So uh, this is uh, the CFP, CFP is current development statistics. Um, so in total, uh, CFP 4.4 kernel is uh, released for yeah, 45 times. And the other time, uh, kernel is released 29 times. So we uh, currently are released uh, almost periodically. But um, after a few years later, uh, we um, changed the uh, release period because uh, it's uh, stability from the kernels. Uh, so that is uh, currently uh, what we are doing. And the uh, next slide shows the CIP core. CIP core is uh, user uh, mostly focusing on the user level programs. And our goal uh, for CIP core is to provide a reference implementation with CIP core packages for testing. And currently we have two profiles, one for tiny and that we used for small IoT devices and uh, controlling devices. And the other one for generic, uh, that is for a uh, much richer uh, environment, uh, something like IoT gateways. And uh, currently, uh, we, uh, both uh, implementation is uh, available on the uh, website. And when you go to cipgitlab.com, CIP project, uh, you can find uh, both uh, CIP for implementations. So, yeah, we are using uh, Debian uh, to create a CFP core, uh, this layer. Um, that is uh, why uh, we start funding for the Debian SDS project to make more stable uh, this layer. Then I pick up some of the Debian packages from the Debian project and also Debian SDS uh, project to create uh, our base layer. Um, so this structure is a uh, kind of we are working on. And uh, so the check testing is uh, yeah, to provide a test environment to test the CFP kernel and CFP core packages. So um, currently, uh, we moved uh, to a distributed testing environment on AWS with Java and kernel CI. And uh, this is the kind of structure for the CIP testing. So we have two profiles for CIP core, and each uh, CIP core profile creates the root file systems uh, by using uh, uh, 
shady corner and also a different packages. And when we create uh, each uh, proper root file system, uh, we run on the uh, Java environment on uh, CRP defined hardware. So that is controlled by Lava uh, from the uh, AWS. And uh, the result also going to the account uh, to, to show the current CI. Uh, I'm sorry, it needs this. So currently, uh, we, box, uh, no, we use uh, Lava and current CI in a uh, CIP project. And we also contribute to, to uh, current CI projects uh, to to uh, improve uh, the activities, so to make a more stable um, our battery. So um, in CIP testing, uh, we currently have uh, six, seven uh, reference boards and one uh, reference board candidate on that. So each uh, reference board and with a CIPS TS kernel, but um, some of both only support uh, the latest CIPS TS kernel. That's because uh, the older kernel doesn't support newer hardware. So we, increase, we are currently uh, plan to increase our reference boards um, to make more uh, stable and also uh, more useful uh, kernels. So, that different boards are decided by a CIP technical standing committee. So if you uh, would like to uh, increase more uh, reference boards, uh, please talk with us. So uh, this is a kind of a way uh, to uh, involve uh, this project. So um, the fifth one is security working groups. So security is um, one of the most important topic nowadays uh, because um, in IoT and industrial IoT devices, many uh, of um, devices connected to network and uh, to provide their uh, functionalities, uh, which means uh, also uh, that kind of uh, devices face some security risks. Uh, so in security working group goals, uh, at the beginning, uh, we try to provide a guideline and different implementations to uh, ensure the uh, security standard requirement. So currently, we're focusing on the uh, IEC 26443 uh, industrial standard. And in, kind of, in our activities, um, so as you can see, the uh, light side box and also a yellow uh, Group, uh, blue boxes. So we just implement the test cases uh, to ensure this uh, cybersecurity standard. And also we just provide guidelines and uh, evidence for that. And the current status is we already completed, completed the investigation for IEC 26403 uh, requirements. And our current uh, latest status is um, we would like to have a gap assessment uh, with cyber certification body. So the certification body uh, certify uh, uh, CIP base layer to ensure other cyber security standard. So without a certification body assessment, uh, we cannot say anything this is uh, such, almost certified or not. So, so we just started the uh, cyber security assessment with a uh, certification body. So that is very uh, interesting and we look forward uh, for the, this result. And the last one is a software update. Um, so our goal is for the software update is uh, to incorporate a common solutions for soft updates for into CRP core. So nowadays many devices connected to the network and we have to manage all of them. And uh, we used to use our uh, specific uh, solutions, but uh, we would like to uh, create more generic solutions for our industry uh, use cases. So currently uh, we 
news uh, is that we update for the uh, uh, base updating systems. And the data updating systems currently controlling is a home system. So we currently create alternative implementations by using both uh, software stacks. And uh, this is the safe update of our view. So yeah, this is a bit complicated, but then yeah, this is our latest results. So um, yeah, when uh, you use uh, this result, uh, you can uh, make sure the uh, file system image is exactly the same as uh, we expected. And also, uh, that is uh, security uh, loaded and also installed. So this is an important feature uh, for industry use cases. So all the implementation is available on website. And you can also find our uh, status update in uh, CRP infrastructure wiki. And currently, uh, we implemented different uh, implementations, but um, this is still kind of proof of concept level. So our uh, future plan is we directly require its code um, for more stable and flexible implementations. So uh, let me summarize our activities. So we currently focus on six activities from current maintenance and uh, software updates. Um, so uh, all activities are related to ensure um, to the three great uh, space area. So and also collaboration is a uh, most important aspect to realize our open source space area. So thank you very much. And let me uh, change uh, tools for uh, concluding uh, this talk. Hi. No, I needed to unmute, sorry. <laughs> um, yes, so um, as we said, I think we motivated uh, why uh, so-called open source base layer, how we call it for industrial grade software is, is really needed. And um, I think we are doing this the right way. So there are several big companies um, uh, which which teamed up and uh, create uh, this. So it's big companies. All of them have in common somehow to have products which are long living, which are living in industry environments, which are living in city and traffic and and so on requirements. And um, also with Renesas, we have a semiconductor on board. And they are providing their uh, their boards um, uh, with CIP support out of the box, and uh, we saw this in the, the test setup. On your slide, slide we have four test labs running, up and running, uh, ensuring that there's no regression. And uh, I think the way to success is here to not build new things, so to team also up with the other open source projects to work upstream. Uh, and uh, it also helps to, to harmonize uh, the, the tool change and um, to also work on this to improve the tool change, uh, to build uh, Linux-based embedded systems and uh, to, to, to ensure the quality of the releases at the, at the end. So, that's basically the main conclusion. Um, again, we have a slide uh, showing all the um, showing all the companies who are at the moment actually contributing, and um, we of course hope uh, to to get others on board. So, be it from the industry space, from the infrastructure space, uh, or from the from the semiconductor area. And um, I think uh, this will get more important in the future. And uh, especially also in times like this, we see how important this infrastructure is for us. And that's important to have a sustainable, not only hardware, but also software stack uh, supporting this. Um, 
you see on that slide, we'll upload the slides, by the way, to SCED.org. This was one of the questions. Um, and uh, there you will find all the links. So feel free to to join the mailing list. Uh, so um, it's 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 an open source project. So everyone can can contribute or just read it. Um, and of course, there's the website uh, and uh, yeah, the Linux Foundation entry pages uh, and. Uh, Yoshi already mentioned the wiki, which is also open to everybody. And last but not least, uh, of course, there are uh, Git repositories, which we refer to. That's it. I think we have a couple of minutes left for questions. So um, feel free uh, to, to ask questions. Maybe use the, the, the questions panel. There are some questions already, so maybe we we start uh, with with the first one, which I found. Um, yeah. One question is, is, is there a dedicated CIP layer available for Yocto? Maybe, Yoshi, this goes in your direction. Okay. Um, so we currently uh, use Yocto as a tools. Um, Oh, not exactly you. So we currently use uh, Bitbig as a tools uh, from Yocto. But uh, we currently uh, use uh, Debian source code. Uh, so which means uh, we uh, don't use uh, exactly uh, Yocto source code. The reason why is uh, yeah, at the beginning of our project, uh, there are no features for the long-term support uh, in the Yocto projects. So that is why, and also Debian has more than five years maintenance period. So this is why we uh, choose uh, uh, Debian source code with a uh, yeah, bit back. So that is the answer for these questions. So the answer is not uh, partially, partially yes, but uh, not exactly using your author itself. Yeah, the thing is the commitment about uh, the, the releases and, and uh, the support. And uh, uh, for us, uh, Yocto is uh, at the moment not committed to, to, to have a release plan. So it's, it's, uh, it's done in some cases, in some cases not. And so it's, uh, we are conservative uh, and we need a long-term plan. And so Debian is, is for us uh, the, the base, which which allows us to build the systems. Okay, then there's a question on uh, verified and secure boot. Um, what actually is uh, is the plan there? Um, I'm not sure what is meant. Uh, there's, uh, yeah. The, the 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 question is uh, that there should be done more basically, and um, maybe um, we could also refer to the security working group. They're actually discussing what to include into CIP and what not. Uh, regarding the actual question regarding the verify and so on, uh, Yoshi, can you answer this? Um. So uh, security boot is uh, one of the important features for industrial use cases, but currently uh, we are yeah, focusing on not the secure boot part. So this is kind of our future plan. Yeah, that's uh, answer, answering okay. your question. Yeah. I think that's all for the moment. If there are still some questions open, um, just feel free to contact us. Uh, you have the contact information in the slides. Um, there's the mailing list, which is always a good place uh -huh. to place questions. Uh, maybe it's also interesting yeah. for others. Um, oh, yes. And with this, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, questions. Uh, first, I can find uh, the other questions. The last question is, uh, yeah. 
something related to the uh, CIP and uh, how to use CIP translator and how to pick up and how this uh, how difficult to use uh, CIP uh, kernel with their project. Think, uh, sorry, I can't find the question. Oh, sorry, uh, I missed that one. Okay. Um, maybe just delete. Deleted. So yeah, let me uh, answer this question. I to use a CIP kernel uh, from uh, no, to migrate a uh, CIP kernel from to CIP kernel. Yeah, we expect that is easier uh, than uh, just move uh, from the uh, CIP kernel to from SLTS kernel to other uh, vendor kernels. So that we try to uh, make. Uh, Compatibility in between the uh, CIP uh, kernel and server kernel. So, this is the answer for this question. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, that, that would have been all questions. So, thank you again for attending. And, um, I think we are pretty much in time. We have like three minutes left. So I think it's okay to say goodbye and hopefully see you on the mailing list or hopefully also pretty soon on a physical event. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.